Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about how to position a sound diffuser. Uh, we all know that we prefer quadratic uh, diffusion here at Acoustic Fields because two reasons, it's predictable and it's consistent in its performance. So you can actually select the frequency response of the diffuser that you want to use uh, for that particular room position and, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. So how to position a sound diffuser within your room. Let's uh, stay with our quadratic because with quadratic we have vertical and horizontal diffusion capabilities. If the diffuser is vertically placed, we know that it diffuses sound horizontally. We know there's an inverse relationship there. If it's horizontally placed, we know it diffuses vertically. So we have two out of how many? Three possible dimensions of sound within our room. So it's a pretty powerful tool if you think about it. So what are we going to do with diffusers in our room and uh, distances? What, what diffuser goes where? Where do you put it? On what wall? And uh, let's try to answer some of those questions. We always have to get back to usage. What is the usage of the room? Because every room's usage determines the positions of the diffusers. Control rooms are different than critical listening rooms. Critical listening rooms are different than voice and live rooms. And all of those rooms are vastly different than home theater. So the first thing we have to do is look at usage. What is the usage of the room? And that'll tell us where, what kind of diffusers to use and where to put them. We'll get to that a little bit later, but let's just get to some basic rules about diffusion and um, in terms of distances, and I think that'll help us understand. Here's a Prime 13 diffuser. Remember, it's Prime 13, so it has 12 wells. Always has one well less than uh, the, the prime number indicates. So if we break down, and we did in our last video, quarter wavelength depths of the Prime 13, we see that we have about 3,400 as our high and 282 is our low. This is the frequency we want to look at in order to determine uh, the distance, how far away from our listening position it should be. So this is the, the key factor here in diffusers. What's the lowest frequency the diffuser diffuses? So does one diffuser fit all situations? No. You have to look at the distances from the wall surface where the diffuser is going to go to the seated position. So this is all uh, uh, critical to getting the maximum performance out of your diffuser. So using our example, 282 cycles, if we divide the speed of sound by the frequency, we get four feet, because these are at quarter wavelength depths. So four feet is four feet away, far enough for the waveform of 282 cycles to completely form within the room. We know that all frequencies above that will be fully formed if we get 282 figured out. So is the four foot distance, is that enough to uh, uh, really realize the full impact of the fuser? There is no definite answer here. You won't find uh, a formula that you can calculate this. In our applications, we use this as a guideline and then we add 50%. So, in our situation, six feet, the four feet plus another two, six feet for 282 is a good starting distance. If you're less than that in terms of distances in your room, we have to go with a lower level diffuser, maybe a prime 11 or a prime seven. So there's applications for all the primes, but we have to keep the distance from the lowest frequency in the diffuser to our seated position in order to maximize the diffusion of that waveform. Now, as a general rule, we try to get as much diffusion, as many sequences, as many frequencies in our diffuser as we can. So we try to get the highest prime that we can. So we want to make sure that uh, we have those distances to work with. If it's a control room, we're probably going to want a absorptive front end and diffusion on the rear wall to prevent the slap back from the rear wall. Home theaters, probably front and rear, maybe just ceiling. It depends on the number of channels, okay? Critical listening, 
diffusion on the front and the rear walls because we're trying to create a natural sound stage and environment. So it just depends on the room and, and what you're trying to uh, use the room for in, uh, in determining diffusion. But as a general rule, try to get as much diffusion in the space that you have, allowing for enough distance for the lowest frequency in the diffuser to fully form. And we use the, the distance of the, the wavelength plus another 50% in, in our calculation. It seems to work really well. We don't get any uh, distortions or uh, any anomalies at, at all. Hope you enjoyed so, today's you. video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.